Hello, Elizabeth. Coach Grimes here. I'm finally getting to your video. And what we're going to do is analyze and break down your technique to see how we can improve. So the first thing we're going to look at is your forehand. And as you watch yourself here, we're going to remind you of the elements of the forehand. Unit turn. Say hi to the fence. Drop the racket by tapping the dog. Windshield wiper to create spin. And follow through shoulder to chin. So let's see how you do in terms of completing those elements. So as you can see here, you're doing a pretty good job of transferring your weight and getting through the ball pretty well for a beginning player. You're contacting the ball out front most of the time, and that's pretty good. Here I have you starting in your unit turn, so we're going to skip right to the second element, and that's tap the dog. In tap the dog, we want our racket to be closed. That is, the face of the racket should be somewhat pointing towards the court. Now, how close that is varies depending on the player, depending on flexibility and grip. But as you can see here, your racket face is pretty open. When this happens, players have a tendency to close their wrist, bringing the racket tip too far forward and causing the ball to veer off to the left. There is also the tendency to slap the ball rather than drive through it. It's sort of like closing a door, but we don't want to close the door. We want to reach out to the door and turn the doorknob. Let's look at recent COFA graduate and current college player, Azalea Lada, in the same tap the dog position. Notice the angle of her racket in comparison to yours. It is a minor detail, but it can be important when developing consistency. Now let's see how you do with the next element, turn the doorknob. As you can see here, because you start out with your racket face so open, it is very difficult to get the racket head in a position to contact the ball and to turn that doorknob to create spin. But there is good in this sequence as well. I like the way you're rotating your hips and getting your right shoulder coming forward through the ball. Your right knee collapses forward and is even with your left knee. As a slightly built player, you're going to need to transfer all of your weight into the shot. Now let's look at the final element, the finish. Very often, when beginning players hit, they slow down their racket because they think that this will prevent the ball from going too long. In fact, slowing down your racket robs the ball of spin and actually contributes to the ball flying too long. Remember, spin creates more air pressure on top of the ball than underneath the ball, at least if you're employing topspin rather than backspin. Rather than slow the racket down, you should accelerate the racket until you catch it over your left shoulder. This is the only thing that should stop your racket, not deceleration. So why does it matter? The ball is already gone, right? Well, it has to do with the way our brains work. If I tell my brain to stop my arm at a certain point, the brain will slow my arm down before it gets to that point. This is not something that we can consciously control. The only way to ensure that we're accelerating through the ball is to keep the racket moving until something stops it. In this case, it's our hand catching the racket over our shoulder. That's it for today. I'm Coach Grimes. I'll see you on the course.